Hi everyone, welcome back to The Vegan Atheist. This week I comment on a video by Jacqueline Glenn entitled Crazy Vegan Idiots. You, my fans, have requested this video through my online poll. I will periodically reset it as I complete the videos you want to see, so check back often and vote. Link is also in the description below. Now, let's get into it. Yes, I'm a bit late to the party as Jacqueline's video came out over a month ago and a lot of other YouTubers have already made their views known with their own response videos. But I hope that you will forgive me for bringing back up, for many of you I'm sure, old news. In the formulating of this video's content, I have purposefully not watched anyone else's response video as I would like to share with you my own thoughts and ideas. The last thing I'm sure any of you want is a rehashing of someone else's content. While it should be obvious and something need not said, the following opinions are my own and I do not speak for anyone except for the vegan atheist. My views are that, mine, and I do not purport to speak for any other vegan or atheist. With all that said, let's dive in. Hey guys, so I'm here with my friend Chris. Hey. And we're going to talk about how much we love vegans. This is going to go well. I want to start this off with a disclaimer. I hold no ill will towards Jacqueline or Chris for expressing their views, and I want to keep this video free from emotion and drama, and just address my concerns. In the spirit of being transparent, Jacqueline helped me and my channel grow a lot in its formative years by agreeing to participate in Stupid Christian Comments number 5. For that, Jacqueline, I thank you. Well, you're a, you're a nasty meat eater, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yes. Why don't you go vegan? Because I don't want to. Oh, you're so horrible. You want to help. Alright, so this appears to me to be nothing more than tongue-in-cheek. However, on the face of it, I can understand how this could be perceived as flippant and callous. I believe in the principle of charity, which in philosophy requires interpreting a speaker's statement or arguments to be rational and to represent the strongest and best possible interpretation. So, let's move on. I get a lot of shit, even though I am a vegetarian. People still criticize me because they're like, oh, you're not vegan. Why don't you go vegan? And I almost feel like I get more shit. Than, yeah. than most people because of that. They're like, oh, well, you're like, you're still a shitty person even though you're trying really hard to do something good. You're still not good enough for me because I'm vegan and I'm better than you. I would agree that anyone attempting to do good or be a good person should not be chastised for not being good enough. The issue, as I see it, is that while vegetarianism is a positive step in the right direction, it is wrought with its own internal issues and, in my opinion, doesn't go far enough to warrant a final ending point. Often, people who identify as vegetarian continue to support cruel and unnecessary practices such as those found in the dairy, egg, leather, wool, and silk industries. If a vegetarian claims to be one for ethical reasons, then purchasing and using any animal products displays a level of cognitive dissonance. However, just like for many vegans, the reasons for someone being vegetarian may not be exclusively or even partially related to ethics. Some vegans and vegetarians don't particularly care about other animals and their well-being and instead justify their position based on environmental and the health arguments. I'm not sure why Jacqueline is a vegetarian, so let's keep going. There are radical sections of any group, and it t tends to be the loudest minority yeah. of a group. A lot of vegans I know aren't these people. Exactly, and I, I do actually think that being vegan is a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not trying to hate on being vegan. This video is not that I hate vegans. It's just there are certain people that are the radicals. Very extreme, yes. and they like make everyone kind of look bad, which is unfortunate. While I often see terms like radical and extreme thrown around far too easily, as an atheist, I see the real harm when dogmatic beliefs direct unsavory behavior. I'm sure none of you right now have to think real hard to come up with examples of violence perpetrated by religious fanatics and for religious reasons. I am pleased to hear Jacqueline express that her critique of veganism is not universal, but instead specific to those who spread hate and violence. It's great that she identifies veganism as a good thing. With that being said, if I ever had the opportunity to ask Jacqueline a question, I would ask why she has not taken the next step and actually gone vegan. Where the people who 
continue to eat meat and dairy, even though they know the impact of their diet choices on the planet, on the animals, they've watched earthlings, they know the facts, they've been educated, but they choose to continue eating animal products, whether they actually deserve to continue living. <laughs> do, do you think people who, who still make the choice to eat meat, do they deserve to continue living? I hope so, because I am part of that, and I, I, mean, I would like to live. In that video, she actually goes on to talk about her family that, you know, consumes meat and dairy products, and that she's like, well, you know, maybe if their existence was threatened, they wouldn't be vegan. Whenever somebody attacks you like this, not only do they sit there and seriously contemplate whether or not you deserve to live, they equate you with rapists and murderers and, like, you know, just, like, these ridiculous comparisons that it's just... Really? I will be honest, I have never watched any video produced by Sorsha, and very few of Freely and Vegan Gains. If the clips that Jacqueline used in this video are an honest picking of these people's perspectives, I agree with both Jacqueline and Chris that violence towards non-vegans is ridiculous and counterproductive. Anyone questioning whether non-vegans deserve to keep living has, in my opinion, fallen off the deep end. Would I love it if all humans went vegan? Obviously yes. Do I expect it? No, not any time in the foreseeable future. The solution to animal use and suffering is not found in advocating for human suffering. For all of you who disagree with me on this, I understand your anger. I've been there. But I've come to understand that it's not the people I hate, but the societal norms that have conditioned such behaviors. Just as I detest the impact of religion on the minds of mostly well-meaning people. But I do know that she is trying to uh, definitely undermine um, slavery. Yeah, how could, you, she's, you can't just say, I'm not trying to undermine slavery by comparing it to eating meat. But you are. You, you are doing that exact thing. You're undermining horrible treatment of human beings yes. just because people eat meat. You don't, you don't see how that's a little ridiculous? As many of my viewers will know, I am not a fan of comparative weighing of moral evils. Humans do a lot of crappy things to each other and to the animals we share this planet with. However, there is no value in equating one example of harm with another. That being said, it's imperative that we identify ethical problems where we find them. Now, let's get specific. Onto this comparison used often by vegans with human slavery on one side and factory farming on another, I understand both the objection raised by non-vegans and the explicit valid parallels within the comparison. I myself have used it in the past with mixed success, and I feel it's due to one major issue, an almost universally perceived human superiority. It is no surprise to anyone when I say that we care more for our family and friends than we care for those around us. We care more for those in our local community than those outside it. We care more for the people within our state or province than we do for the people in others. We care more for those within our borders than those who live behind it. We also care for those within our species more than those outside it. For dare I say it, most people care infinitely more about humanity and our desires than we care about the well-being of other animals, even those harmed by our own hands. So, when a vegan uses the slave analogy as a way to highlight problematic moral threads present in both human slavery and animal agriculture, the non-vegan hears an equating of the two, a human tragedy versus mere animals, instead of a useful analogy. They may not be apples and oranges, but we are discussing within the category of fruit. Consider this for a moment. Imagine explaining to someone what characteristics make both an apple and an orange a fruit. Sweetness? Shape? Function of the fruit to its tree? Would laying bare those analogous features equate an apple with an orange? I don't think so, because we hold no skin in the game and we can remain objective. Too often, like is evident in Jacqueline's video, people conflate analogy with equating, especially when we feel our moral framework has come into question. Most people believe they are decent and good and vehemently defend their worldview when threatened. No one likes to be pointed out that what they regularly think or do is potentially harmful. How are you different than any racist who say, 
They're just black people, throw them in prison, lock them up like animals, who cares? This is why people have issues with, with extreme vegans and, and unfortunately generalize them because people say stupid shit like that. One of the greatest things about the internet is that it gives everyone a voice. And one of the worst things about the internet is it's it gives everyone, everyone a voice. <laughs> and the thing is, is like these people that are saying these things, they're not saying it because they're trying to make a difference. If you are trying to make a difference, the way that you do that is to move people. What these people are doing is what is called virtue signaling. This is not them being like, I want to make a difference in this world and I want to save the animals and make the environment better. This is, I want you all to know that I'm a great I'm person. I'm so awesome. I'm the best person better on the planet you. and I'm a better person than you. Because it's easy to make content where you shame people because everybody likes drama. But if these people really want to make a difference, suggesting that they are rapists and murderers and should just kill themselves, probably not the best way to go about that. Really? Well, are you sure? In the past, I have not been a fan of Vegan Gains, at least from over a year ago when I last watched his stuff. He may very well have changed for the better. However, I do not read minds and therefore cannot honestly conclude that Vegan Gains says and does what he does to stroke his own ego. I have no doubt that many, like him, are motivated to change minds, but sometimes they do so in a way that perhaps is not the most pragmatic. In the past, I have been criticized for coming off as having an I'm better than you attitude, and I can honestly say, believe me or not, I couldn't care less what anyone thinks of me. I am a vegan because it's the least I can do to make this world a little bit better. I don't think I'm special, and I know through years of experience how easy it is to be a vegan, at least in a western affluent nation in which I make a modest salary. So we've already gotten the you should just kill yourself or do you even deserve to live. Now we've gotten the you're the same as a racist and if you eat meat you're basically condoning slavery. And uh, now we're going to see the uh, you can't be a feminist and you're definitely sexist and condone rape if you eat meat. If you're a feminist, you most likely condone rape. In order for a female mammal to start lactating, they must be pregnant in order to do so. So in the dairy industry, female cows have to be artificially inseminated, aka raped, in order to produce milk. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Or you could just choose cruelty-free vegan options and not condone rape. But until then, you support rape and you're not a real feminist. There is no doubt that dairy cows have it seriously rough, which is one reason why I'm vegan and not vegetarian. I do not, however, see any reason to bring up feminism. Feminism, at its core, is the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of the equality of the sexes. What happens to farmed animals is about speciesism and issues with cross-species empathy, and not an issue of sexism. What is done to male and female animals is detestable and should not be continued. Factory, factory farming, to me, is definitely something that needs to change. I agree. I, I think that it's awful. I've made several videos on that. It's great to see that both Chris and Jacqueline are against factory farming, at least in principle, but I do wonder in practice if they live it. Principles believed but not realized in action are principles unheld. If one is careful to avoid factory farming, wonderful. We could then move the discussion onto issues related to the supposedly animal-friendly farms, but that is a topic for another video. You don't need, honestly, none of these people even deserve attention. <laughs> They don't, because they're not representative of the whole and they're not contributing to the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I know so many vegans that would never say stuff never, like this. Never, 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 never. Again, I think it's important to acknowledge that both Chris and Jacqueline are not painting all of veganism with a wide critical brush. Their ire is focused on specific vegans who perhaps represent a fringe vocal minority. Good on them for making that distinction. Vegan doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Vegan just means no animal products. Make the choices for yourself, don't make the choices for other people. It's not to say that veganism works for everyone, because it doesn't. Definitely, being vegan doesn't necessarily entail being healthy. Some people go vegan for health reasons, some strictly for ethical and some environmental, or some combination of all three. Being healthy on a vegan diet is pretty straightforward and easy, if you take the time to read up and ensure that you know what you ought to be eating. On the point brought up towards the end by Chris regarding not making the choice for other people, that seems to me an odd statement. 
I cannot make any choice for anyone except myself. Listening to reasons why one ought to be vegan is not making the choice for others. It is up to each and every one of us to do or not to do with what information we are presented. From a strictly biological level, there are very few people that would not flourish on a vegan diet. The real challenge is to change minds to affect change in action. The moral of the story here is like, don't be so pushy and mean and negative. Like, it's never, ever going to get through yeah. to the masses like that. Just don't bullshit. If you want to make a difference, educate. I, for the most part, agree. Education is the key. Force is not. Violence and angry rants are not effective means of convincing anyone to your way of thinking. It may be therapeutic to shout and scream your frustrations, but in the pursuit to change minds, the method and style of communication is key. Like the quote I read in a recent video, people do not want to find out they are wrong. The more you throw it in their face, the more they dig their heels in and cling to their beliefs. Your message may be great and needed, but the way you communicate is just as important and should not be overlooked. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button below. To ensure you don't miss out on future content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Want to have your say in what videos I produce? Have your desires known by voting in my online poll. Thanks for watching.